Okay, uh, today's topic is Modbus Gateway Solutions uh, using our TGW 700 series. Um, this is our agenda for today. First, we'll give you a brief overview of Modbus RTU versus Modbus TCP, the differences and the benefits. Uh, then we'll go over a few uh, applications and solutions. Uh, first, we'll show you how to create a Modbus TCP to Modbus R2 gateway, uh, where a Modbus TCP uh, master can communicate to a Modbus R2 slave device or devices. Uh, then we'll show you the opposite solution, where if you had a Modbus R2 master and wanted to talk to a Modbus TCP slave device, uh, we'll show you how to do a serial tunnel uh, through Ethernet, where you have uh, serial devices on both ends connected through an Ethernet connection to be able to bridge uh, long distance or inter-office uh, applications. And then finally, we'll show you how to configure uh, the modules in these various conf uh, configurations, and we'll go over a few applications. Muted. Okay, first a little bit about ICP DOS. ICP DOS was established in 1993. Our headquarters is in Xinchu, Taiwan. Our ICP DOS USA office was launched in 2001 in Southern California to support the North and South American markets. Our company is ISO 9001, and we're a Windows embedded partner. And all of our products are Rojas compliant. Uh, Modbus RTU was developed by Modicon in 1979, which is now Schneider Electric. Uh, it's open source and royalty free. That's why it's become the most popular or commonly used in, uh, protocol for industrial applications. It's usually serial based uh, over RS-485, which allows you to uh, connect up to 255 devices in a daisy chain configuration along a single bus. A note that serial communication via RS-485. Uh, the difference between this and Modbus TCP is Modbus TCP is an Ethernet-based uh, version of Modbus. It was developed in 1999 and is similar in structure to Modbus RTU. A Okay, I guess we'll begin again. We had a technical difficulty, the screen was paused. I'll just start from the beginning again. Okay, we'll start one more time because uh, we had technical difficulties. You weren't able to see my screen change. Now you should be able to. So again, thank you for attending our webinar this month. This month we'll go over Modbus Gateway Solutions using our TGW 700 series. Uh, this is our agenda for today. Uh, first we'll go over uh, the differences between Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU. Uh, then we'll give you a few solutions. Uh, first one would be Modbus TCP to RTU, where you have a Modbus TCP master device or master devices which communicate to Modbus RTU slave devices. Uh, secondly, we'll do the opposite solution where if you had a Modbus RTU master and wanted to communicate to a Modbus TCP slave, then we'll go over a serial tunnel application where you can uh, connect two serial networks uh, through an ethernet connection to bridge a gap in communication where you, know, you would normally have to wire between uh, two serial networks and combine them through an Ethernet network. And then finally, we'll go over some applications and how to configure the modules for uh, this part these particular applications. A little bit about ICP DOS. ICP DOS was established in 1993. Our headquarters is in Xinchu, Taiwan. And ICP DOS USA was established in Southern California in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. Our company is ISO 9001 certified, and we're a Windows embedded partner, 
and all of our products are Rojas compliant. Here's an overview of Modbus. Modbus RT or Modbus was developed by Modicon in 1979, which is now owned by Schneider Electric. It is open source and royalty free and has become the most commonly used industrial protocol. Um, let's see, it's serial based protocol, usually implemented over RS-45, but can be implemented over RS-232 or RS-422. Uh, using RS-45, you can wire up to 255 devices along a single uh, bus by daisy chaining modules. Uh, the difference, the main difference between Modbus RT and Modbus TCP is that Modbus TCP is implemented over Ethernet, over an Ethernet network where you can add to an existing network if there's already infrastructure. It's similar to Modbus RT in a, a master-slave uh, configuration and uh, communication uh, uh, commands. Uh, larger networks are possible due to Ethernet communication being faster and more easily expandable, and devices traditionally have a unique IP address to differentiate uh, slave devices versus uh, um, individual uh, Modbus slave IDs or addresses. Uh, but the main difference again is Modbus RTU is serial based, Modbus TCP is Ethernet based. Here's a typical application of Modbus RTU. Uh, you have a, a controller, a PLC, or Modbus master device connected uh, via RS-45 to several uh, slave devices along a single bus where each uh, slave device is uh, daisy-chained. Modbus TCP, on the other hand, has a master device on uh, the left side connected through Ethernet to an Ethernet switch and connected to Modbus TCP slave devices also connected through the Ethernet. Uh, some features of the TGW series, which is our solution to help bridge the gap between these two communication types. Uh, first of all, it's a very cost-effective solution, uh, usually under $200. Uh, they support the Modbus TCP master and slave communication and Modbus R2 master and slave communication. It supports pair connection to create a serial bridge or serial tunnel, which we'll show you shortly. And it's a tiny form factor in that it's a very small package and very uh, low power consumption and can be PoE powered as well. Uh, here's our selection guide. On the left side, we have our individual uh, modules. Uh, TGW is a series, followed by seven, which is part of the model number. And then the next digit calls out the number of COM ports. Uh, the, the third digit calls out the types of uh, COM ports. Note for our uh, example, the first line has one COM port and it's RS-232. Uh, the second line item has uh, two COM ports uh, where it's two RS-232 COM ports, so it has a COM1 and COM2. Our most commonly used one is TGW715, which uh, is RS-45, has a single RS-45 bus. And uh, let's see, we also have modules with isolation, which I'll go over in the next slide. Uh, but for ordering these, you just simply select the number of uh, COM ports and type that you need, and if you need isolation or not. Our isolation feature adds the option for power isolation up to 1,000 volts DC and signal isolation along with ESD protection. A configuration of these modules is done through a web browser. Um, so let's see, I'll show you an example shortly, but uh, traditionally what you do is you open a web browser uh, set your computer to be on the same network as the module itself, or you can use our eSearch utility to preset the IP address to, of the module without changing your network. Uh, you open the web browser, type the IP address of the module, which you configure, uh, log in using the default password of admin. This password is changeable later on by the user if you want. 
uh, than the C3. Uh, the main screen, it will show you an overview of what the module is configured for. There will be a better picture later in the presentation when I go over the live presentation or live uh, configuration. Uh, you use these settings to set the COM port settings for each individual COM port. If there's more than one, there will be uh, selections for a port 2 and a port 3. Uh, here's some typical applications. Uh, this is the first application which we'll go over. It's a Modbus TCP to Modbus RTU uh, gateway, where you have Modbus TCP slave device connected by Ethernet to uh, a TGW uh, connected uh, through another Ethernet connection somewhere else along the or within the computer's network, and connected to a Modbus RTU slave devices. I have a quick video to show you, which shows the actual configuration. Okay. Okay, so first thing you do is you can use our eSearch utility scan the network for available modules. Uh, once the module is found, you click on it to highlight it, and then you click Configuration UDP. This is used to set the IP address, subnet mask, and gateway. You want to make sure that it matches that of your computer or the network that is going to be deployed upon. Uh, you, from there, you can uh, research to set the, uh, check that your IP address was set config, uh, properly, and you can either click the web a button there or open the browser independently and just simply type the IP address which you just configured. Uh, previously I set it for 192.168.255.5. I type that browser, get the admin page, and let's go back a little bit. Well then you type the admin password which is admin and it'll bring you to this page right here where it shows you an overview of the module's configuration. Uh, this module has two COM ports, so there's a port one and port two. Uh, similarly, what you do here is uh, set the baud rate and parity options for the devices you'll be talking to. You wanna make sure that you match your slave devices. You can have individual uh, baud rates on each uh, individual COM port. And one thing to note that uh, port one is port 502 in Modbus TCP communications, and port two would be a port uh, port 503 for Modbus TCP. So you can have two independent networks where you can have multiple node ID one or Modbus address one devices. And you just need to specify the TCP port. Under the network tab, you can also use this to update the IP settings of the module. You can set the timeout and a few other uh, variables. You can set uh, restrictions, timeout exceptions, busy exceptions here. And this is all you need to configure the module. This is the filter tab, so if you want to restrict access to the data, you can either use your router or you can use these settings. Okay, and then we'll go back to the slideshow. So for Modbus TCP to Modbus R2 configuration, uh, the configuration is you set the IP address for the module, uh, COM1 devices are connected through port uh, 502, and then you must set your baud rate and parity options within the web page to talk to your slave devices. Um, our next configuration is a Modbus RTU to Modbus TCP uh, gateway, where you have a Modbus RTU master device uh, talking to Modbus TCP slave device. Uh, to do this, you set the module in client mode. I'll show you a slide in a second uh, with the configuration, but what you do is you 
preset the baud rate in the TGW to match that of your Modbus master device. You set the module, the TGW module up in client mode, and you uh, set the remote pair uh, application or IP address to the IP address of your slave device and you access through port 502. Configuration is this. At the top, I show the port one configuration. At the bottom, under application mode, instead of a server, you just use a drop down box, uh, change it to client, and submit. Then you get these additional settings right here. Um, let's see, you again, uh, for remote server IP, you point to the IP address of your Modbus TCP slave device. Note you can only have one, and uh, one per TGW module, and then the remote uh, TCP port 502 is set as the default. Uh, next, we have our serial tunnel application. In this implementation, there's a PLC or any device connected by RS-485 on one end, connected through an Ethernet switch through two TG TGW modules, and data is passed to the other side of the uh, RS-485 bus. This is great for like office buildings where there's uh, multiple floors, uh, large factories where there's machinery implemented all over the floor, the factory floor, and other locations, sometimes even uh, from interlocation, like from city to city, all connected through a serial tunnel. Uh, here's a, another picture showing a similar thing. You can also have Modbus RTU or Modbus RTU ASCII protocol, and it allows you to uh, have different baud rates at each side as well. So again, uh, RS-485 bus on the left side connected through Ethernet going to the other side through the Ethernet. Uh, the application mode is very similar to the previous two. Uh, TGW number one, you set up uh, normally, uh, let's see, as the server, and you set the baud rate inside, and just uh, as if it were a normal uh, TGW application where it's Modbus TCP to Modbus RTU. The second module is the key. Uh, for that, you set that one up in client mode, very much like we did for the RTU to TCP where you specify the IP address of the second TGW or the server, and you point to 502 if that's the uh, bus that you're trying, trying to talk to. And implementation is uh, pretty straightforward. Whatever comes in on one side of the bus should come out the other side, and communication is paired one-to-one. -one. Uh, here's a few industries and applications which the TGWs are great for. Uh, factory automation applications, home automation applications, and the uh, up-and-coming uh, building automation is becoming very popular as well for these. Our remote diagnostics, our remote management, and solar monitoring. Some complementary products which you'll need as well. Uh, the NS205 is a five-port unmanaged Ethernet switch. So if you don't have an existing uh, Ethernet network in the building, uh, you can use this to uh, combine the two TGW modules, or you can uh, use that along with your router or existing Ethernet network. Uh, the NS205 is a great uh, option as well. This would be if you wanted to use PoE power for the TGW modules. Uh, the NS205 PSE, you supply it uh, 48 volts a DC and it will pass power to the NS or to the TGW modules using PoE power. And finally, our EDS power supplies, which supply 24 volts and come in 25, 50, and 100 watt options. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll answer them at this point.